So you've just unlocked the aviation node of the tech tree, and you're ready to build a plane. You've got in mind, you're going to build something like this. But somehow, you always end up with something like this. Well, I'm here to tell you how to avoid the classic mistakes, primarily building too big of a plane with too many control surfaces. Instead, build something completely practical. We start with a Mark I cockpit. We need some fuel, classic mistake, use the big fuel tank. No, we don't have the engines for that yet. Small fuel tank, two of them. You put them on the side of the cockpit though, you're gonna angle inwards. Fortunately, the roof's flat. Then we're gonna use the move tool to get them where we want them. That looks good for now. Then we're gonna throw on Juno engines. Air intakes. Wings. Now, we're gonna look at these wings by mass. Lightest one, the winglet. It's got no control surfaces, but we don't need control surfaces because we're gonna put on some reaction wheels. You know what? Put on four of them. People will tell you reaction wheels don't go on planes. Don't listen to them. Later on, when you've got a full set of control surfaces, you understand how they work. Sure, skip the reaction wheels. But for now, they're gonna let us have roll, pitch, yaw control, everything, without worrying about any of these weird, weird aerodynamic parts. Now we need something to provide yaw stability. So let's put them on at an angle. Get a little bit of extra lift out of it. Looking good. This plane looks beautiful. See this big flat surface on the back? That's a problem. Way too much drag. So, grab a nose cone. Press W twice. It's a tail cone. Tail cone. Put on some wheels. Fixed landing gear, your best friend. Steerable landing gear, too wobbly. Fixed landing gear on the back. Rotate them so that they're flat to the ground. Fixed landing gear on the front. Rotate them so they're flat to the ground. We want our front landing gear to be lower to the ground than our back landing gear so that our plane is pointed upward slightly on the runway. Now, we're going to look at our center of mass and our center of lift. We're going to move the whole engine compartment forward so that Valentina can get out of the plane. We're going to move these wings in a little bit. We're going to take the other wings, front ones, we're going to put our snap off so we can do some fine tuning. We're going to angle them up just slightly. Front wheels breaks off, rear wheels breaks to about 100. This is a plane. Your once plane launch. Look at it on the runway, it's a thing of beauty. SAS on, throttle full. Engage engines. We're going to start pitching up immediately. Look at that. A stable takeoff. Hands off the controls. Flying straight and true. We can roll. We can bank. We can pitch up. We get pitched down. If we yaw, the plane rolls automatically. Keeps us stable and level. If we want to be more maneuverable, all we gotta do 
pull down the throttle a bit. Got a long way to fly. Just point it at the horizon and hit time warp. It's stable enough to handle it. Oh yeah, and of course it's supersonic. Worried about range? Yeah, it's got two little fuel tanks. This thing will fly all the way to the poles. So that's all there is to it. You can have a practical, maneuverable, supersonic plane at the first aviation node, 8,125 kerbucks. Just 20 parts, no building upgrades, easy to fly, takes off, lands. All you have to do is throw out everything you know about planes. Instead, make use of what you know about kerbals. Thanks for watching, fly safe.